Hello and welcome to the shop. I'm going to do things a little bit differently today and I'll tell you why. I know this is hard to believe, but I have run out of pen kits. <laughs> I have maybe six or seven slimline kits in the shop and that is literally it. Um, I'm waiting to place an order. My club, I'm doing a huge order for my club and I'm going to combine my order with that. It, it always benefits us on shipping, you know, the larger the order. So I'm working, I'm waiting for a check from my club, which should arrive today or, or Monday. And then I'll, uh, I'll get to get my order placed, but I can't stand not being able to turn when I have a few minutes. And that's what I'm going to do today. What, what I do in situations like this, and this is probably the fifth or sixth time that this has happened, and I hate to say that, but that's the truth. I, I get to where I run out of kits. I am going to turn pins. I, I, I'm going to prep them. I'm going to turn them. They're going to be completely ready to go. And when the kits get here, all I have to do is press them together. So for you today, I have two incredible blanks. These were sent to me by Katrina from Patriot Pins. Now, I don't have a web address for her at the moment. I'm going to reach out today, and hopefully by the time this video airs, I'll be able to put that down in the comments. But take a look at these blanks. They are phenomenal. The top one is a Pledge of Allegiance blank over the flag, and the bottom one is a Second Amendment blank over the flag. They look absolutely gorgeous just like this. I can't wait to turn them and polish them and see what happens. These are already tubed. They come pre-tubed and they are for the three eighths inch tubes. So they're for the bolt action pin. And I, I, I've got several of those on my order. I'll get them here soon. But today I'm going to prep these two blanks. And when we get done, these are going to blow your mind because they look incredible. I'm at the lathe and I'm looking forward to this. I actually have two sets of these bolt action bushings. So we're gonna turn both blanks at the same time. This is a tool that I've had for a while. Uh, I believe it's high density polyethylene and it's got these uh, ribs on the front end. And the nice thing is you can stick it into your Morse taper, twist it and it cleans uh, cleans out the Morse taper because if you get a bunch of dust and grime in there, uh, it makes it tougher to remove your, uh, your, your in, any of your tools that you have mounted in the uh, Morse taper, as well as uh, it could also potentially cause you to be just a little bit out of alignment. I got this from Penn State. I've had it for three or four years. I just always forget to use it, so I pulled it out the other day and thought, I'm going to start uh, employing this tool. Go ahead and get our mandrel. I'm going to turn on the mandrel today as opposed to um, turning between centers. Let me get a couple of these bushings off of here. I got too many on there. And we'll get our first blank on. I'm just really looking forward to this. It's been a while since I've turned. Um, I got something. Looky there. I got a little bit of grime. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to start off with a little mandrel maintenance. Let me uh, pull these blanks off of here and we'll we'll clean this mandrel up. With the amount of use that this mandrel gets, I think you can see right there and right there, it's got a little bit of CA on it. So I just usually take a piece of 100 grit sandpaper, turn my lathe all the way down, and I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of sand the mandrel. This will take any of the um, the high spots from the glue off. And there, there are little nicks too, where sometimes you know I've, I've uh, nicked the mandrel. We're just gonna clean it off really well. You can feel it as you're sanding. You can feel the rough spots. We're gonna wipe her down, get all of that uh, dust off of there. And then I'm gonna feel it with my finger. Feel uh, Right there, I got a rough spot. Let's turn it off and see what that looks like right there. Okay, that's where I had, <laughs> that's where I glued a bushing to my mandrel one time and had to cut it off uh, with a Dremel tool. So that's just a little nick in the, in the mandrel. Uh, I'm noticing a little bit of wobble in my mandrel, so I'm going to work on that real quick. Get the tailstock out of there. Sometimes, there we go. You can kind of flex these mandrels. I mean, they're chintzy. They're not really anything. I think I'm flexing just a little bit too far. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty darn good. I got a little bit of run out, but the thing is, I think the uh, I think the uh, mandrel saver will take care of that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, 
Now what I want to do is I'm going to put just a little bit of Plastix on here. Uh, this is a polish, and uh, it's going to kind of polish it up, make it slippery, and hopefully it'll put a surface on there which will uh, help reduce, whoa, there we go, reduce the possibility of the um, CA glue sticking because the CA glue comes down from, let me stop this for a second. There we go. I didn't have it jammed in there. The CA glue will go between, or it can run down the um, the nonstick bushings sometimes and get onto the mandrel. Or if you're if you're CAing with bushings, you know it can get between the bushing and the blank. So I'm just going to polish this up a little bit in hopes that it'll help. And you could use a little paste wax on here that would help. And I'm looking at my mandrel. I'm really happy. It looks like it's running fairly true. I think we're ready now to go ahead and get these blanks chucked up. All right, take two. Let's see what we've got here. I'm going to grab the Pledge of Allegiance blank first, put a couple of bushings on it. You know, I tell you what, I, I'm worried about this. Let me grab the Magnum bushings. These may be set up for Magnums. I thought they were 3 8 but uh, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a lot of gap in that bushing. So let me grab my Magnum bushings and see if uh, maybe these are Magnum tubes. Okay, let's see what we've got. I'll be a son of a gun. They sure are. I uh, misread that. These are set up for the Magnums, which I'll be honest with you, I am a huge fan of the Magnum. I like it way better than the standard Bolt. Uh, we're going to get that chucked up. Let me see if I've got another set. Sometimes I have two sets of bushings. Let me check and see if i got another set of Magnums. I do have another set of Magnum bushings, but take a look at them. They're pretty darn wore out. So I don't think I'm going to chance it. What I'm going to do is uh, we're going to remove this and we're going to put a couple of bushings behind here for spacers. A couple of bushings on this side for spacers. Get it to where we can, there we go. Looks like this is going to be, uh, isn't going to be a two for today. This is going to be a, a one pen at a time deal, but that's okay. These are Lumalite. They'll turn, they'll turn really well. Let me uh, tighten up my tailstock a little bit. All right, I believe we're ready. I'm going to go ahead and uh, run, put an edge on my tool, and then we're going to come back and we're going to get this blank turned down. I just love turning a Lumalite. Look at that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That pretty much sums it up, doesn't it? Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to micro mesh this one and get it ready for buffing. And then at the end, I'll go ahead and put both blanks on this mandrel uh, and just buff them both at the same time. Because even though those other bushings are wore out for turning and sanding, they'll be just fine for buffing. I got a perfect fit at the bushings. Really happy with that. I turned this blank at 3000 RPMs. And right now I'm sitting at about 870 RPMs, somewhere between 800 and 900. And I'm ready to go ahead and start micro meshing this blank. Blank looks pretty darn good right out of micro mesh. I still actually see a couple of scratches in the service. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run through the pads a second time. Uh, make sure we lift all of those scratches out. And I probably will start with uh, either the second or the third pad because I'm worried that the first pad, since these are uh, rotational scratches, they were put in by the micro mesh. And uh, I probably will start with the second or third pad to avoid, you know, putting them, putting any more in or deepening those up. So I'm going to run through that and I'll be right back. Just finishing up with the final pad here on the second pass. Wipe this blank down a little bit. 
Let's see how she looks. I did speed the lathe up a little over nine, about 950. And, and I'm watching my light above shines on the back of this blank and I can kind of watch that reflection line and I can usually see any flaws in the blank. Uh, things like scratches or pits or grain, uh, things that I want to fill or, or sand back off. And this blank is looking absolutely gorgeous. I'm not seeing any scratches. That second pass cleaned it right up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this one off the lathe. Let's get the uh, second amendment blank on here. We'll get that turned and then we'll come back and buff both of them at the same time. Ready to start turning, but I tell you what, that right there, that's a picture. Isn't that beautiful? That is a gorgeous blank. You may not have been able to see it in the video uh, because I probably ran it at four speed, but I was noticing just a just a hair of drag on my tool. Uh, at that point, I probably should have taken the tool back to the grinding wheel and put a new edge on it. What I'm guessing happened is during the turning of the first blank, I probably got out and got onto the bushing, the aluminum bushing, and uh, roughed up the uh, bevel on the tool. Because like I said, I could feel it dragging. Anytime you, your tool doesn't feel normal, go ahead and touch it up. Uh, don't, don't do what I did. I was chancing it because when it's like that, it could catch and it could chip and I could have lost a big chunk of this blank. Let me go ahead now and get the micro mesh out and we'll uh, micro mesh this blank. Once again, I turned this blank at about 3,000 RPMs, and I've slowed the lathe down. I'm about 930 right now. I had a little better luck uh, in the 900 range with the micro mesh last time, so I'm going to kind of stick there. Uh, this is a newer set of micro mesh pads, so they are relatively aggressive, and I think that's why I got the scratches. So I'm just going to uh, try to work them a little bit longer, and hopefully I can uh, eliminate that issue with this blank. I'm just finishing up with the final pad. I think we're going to be in a lot better shape. This blank actually looks shinier as uh, as it's spinning. So hopefully that means I've removed those uh, scratches and we've got a nice reflective surface. Just watching my line. So far looking really good. I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, I, th I think I just didn't work the first set of pads long enough. That looks amazing. I'm going to go ahead and get both blanks on this mandrel and then we're going to buff them up. I got both blanks on the mandrel and I got a kick out of this. Take a look. This is the bushing that I turned on and this is the old bushing. <laughs> Take a look at how dished out that is. That's amazing. I'm glad I didn't chance it with that bushing because I would have been way below the surface of my pin components. I absolutely love the way these blanks turned out. They're just gorgeous. Take a look at them. I love the blue in this Second Amendment blank, but the flag is just gorgeous in the first. Look at all the stars on it. These are fantastic. They're extremely detailed. I love them. And I've got some other good news. Since I discovered that these are magnum bolts and I turn primarily, I would say I turn 90, 98 magnum, 2% standard 3 8 uh, bolt action. I have got a couple of pins. I went in the house and pulled them out of my, my box of pins that I take to the shows. And this is a deer antler pin, and you can't really see it in the video, but I've noticed some cracking uh, with the uh, finish, so I can't really sell that. Um, I won't even take it to a show. So I got two of them that are damaged like that, and one of them was dropped, so it's got a spider web effect in it. And I'm gonna go ahead and knock them apart 
and I'm going to use these parts and assemble these blanks and we're going to have some pretty amazing looking pins. So this is kind of a bonus. I wasn't expecting this and I'm really excited about it. So let me get started taking these apart. I've gathered up all the parts that I'll need to disassemble this pin. You can see that I've already taken one apart and that kind of gave me a dry run to make sure that I got everything I need. Uh, so I'm going to do the second one on camera. With these magnum bolts, you're just going to unthread the front nib of the pin and that brings the uh, ink refill and the spring out with it. Now we're going to use a little smaller punch. Now what I want to show you is this punch fits perfectly. This is the largest size that will fit into the threaded portion. So use the largest one that will fit. I'm just going to grip this and tighten it down a little bit. You want to have a good grip, but you don't want to grip so tight that you crush the blank. There we go. I'm just going to kind of hold it like this and a couple of wax with a hammer. And the back section comes right out. Now we flip it over and we'll use a little larger. Once again, it is the largest punch that will fit into the uh, barrel. And uh, I had to flip it over because this is the side that I usually tap on and that side kind of mushrooms a little bit. So uh, you always end up tapping on the same side. A couple of pops. And oh, that one's bringing the tube with it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and knock it all the way out. That was a bit unexpected. Hmm. Well, let me... This is kind of neat. I mean, it's good that this happened. I did not have enough glue on here. The glue gave, gave loose from the blank. Um, let me see what I want to do to relieve this. I think what I'm going to do, it's pretty well locked onto the, uh, the punch, which tells me that this tube was probably a bit deformed at some point. So what I think I'm going to do is grab my Dremel tool and I'm just going to nick the end of this blank to where I can peel it back. That'll let me pop this little uh, threaded section out and reuse it. Obviously, we don't want to damage that. And then the tube, we should be able to grab with a pair of pliers and pull off of our punch. I'm back with my Dremel. And I want to be really careful not to dig into uh, this little threaded grommet. I just want to um, cut the tube. So we're going to take our time. Okay, I think we've got it. Uh, what I'm going to do is take a screwdriver now and put it into that little uh, groove and twist it, which I'm hoping will spread the brass apart enough for me to pull the grommet out. I'm going to attempt to use this little stubby screwdriver because I'm afraid with a longer screwdriver, I'm, my hands are farther apart and there's more chance that I could slip off and, and hurt myself. This will give me a little more control. And once again, I just want to get that in there and try to pry it apart, which isn't working quite as well as I thought it would. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Let's try this. It should be loose. If I bend it just a little bit, there we go. That's perfect. Look at that. Now I did get into it just a little bit. Take a peek at this. I nicked it just a tiny bit, but I don't think that'll hurt anything. Um, you can't see it on the bottom. It's mostly just on the back side. I think we'll be okay. Um, let me, there we go. That came right off of my punch, so I'm in good shape there. All right, let me get everything reorganized and we'll put these pins together. I'm going to take our first blank and we'll stick the grommet into the bottom of the blank. Let's flip it around to where that's against the, the hard part there. Press it into place. Looks really nice. I think that's going to work out real well. Let's grab the second grommet while we're already set up. We'll go ahead and press this one in. Now these have a little, see the little uh, line on them? That is a tapered section. That goes into the blank first and it kind of allows you to seat it with your finger so that it'll stay in place while you put it into your press. Just press that down in there. That's perfect. Now we'll come back and we'll grab the back half of our pin. Adjust my press out. Yep, that's going to work. 
Now I want to make sure with this one, I want the clip, let's see, yeah, that's going to be perfect because the clip is going to go right down this red stripe of the flag where there is no text. And that's what I want because I want, I want this to lay on a desk like this and there's the Pledge of Allegiance starting right there. So kind of think, think about how you want your, your clip to lay on your pen because it does make a difference. There we go. Press that into place. Grab our second one here. Whoops, wrong piece. Take a look at this one and I'm looking for, this one has writing everywhere. I think, let's see. You know what, let's see. I need to rotate this. Uh, looks like my clip was not, it probably got loose at the show or something and tightened back up and it was in the wrong position. Let's just align. I'm looking for that little, there's a little little uh, indention there where that's cut out for that to fit into. I still haven't made it. <laughs> there we go. That's it. There we go. That's much better. See, now it'll lay like this, and there's your Second Amendment you want to show. So I'm going to make sure that the clip goes right over top of the blue section of the flag, right down that red stripe. Flip her around here. Let's line it back up, make sure everything looks good. It does. Let me get a hold of the press. Nice and slow. I don't like to press quickly because you don't you don't want to uh, get this thing started at a bit of an angle and then have it uh, get jammed up. That's going to be nice. Okay, now this is already together, but basically you've seen these bolts before. They come with a spring. And you just basically slide the spring over top of the ink refill put it into the nib, and then that part just threads onto the pin. Oh, wow, that's a beauty. Take a look at that, isn't that gorgeous? That is just beautiful. It looks so much better than that uh, antler. I mean, I love antler pins, but uh, that one just has so much more character. Put this one together. There we go, looks like the bolt was out. Look at that one. It's so shiny, it's hard to see with the glare from the light. These things really shine. Now look at that. Now that's how they're gonna lay on your desk. Actually though, let me get a better picture for you. I'll flip these around and get a better picture. Hang on one second. Here's a close up of the pins. Don't they look gorgeous? I got them in a section of the shop where the lighting is not as, as, as bright so that they don't reflect too much but they're still really reflecting that light. Alumalite polishes up so brilliantly. I just love them. Well, this turned out to be way better of a day than I thought. I thought I was gonna turn a couple of blanks and have to park them until I got some kits, and I thought this video was gonna end with just showing a couple of blanks, but I ended up finding out that these blanks were built for magnum bolt actions, and then I remembered that I had a couple of damaged antler bolt actions in the house, and uh, knocking them apart, the kits were perfect on them. They're flawless. I ended up with two stunning pins. These are gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Katrina, thank you so much. Remember, that is Katrina at Patriot Pins. Uh, I am going to attempt to get her contact information. And if I can, it will be in the comments below. Uh, if not, um, hopefully we can find her on social media, maybe Facebook or Instagram. Thank you for coming and joining me in the shop today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great day.